What if I told you that a few simple tweaks could skyrocket your website's traffic? And you know what? You can do it without spending a single penny on ads. Now in today's video, I'm gonna reveal one of the most overlooked ranking factors on Google that could be holding your site back. Now this one change took a website from just 156 clicks to over 589 clicks a day in just three months, all from updating a few titles and descriptions. So I'm about to show you exactly how to do it and how you can achieve these same results. So if we Google Plumbers London, you'll see sponsored ads on top. Below that, you've got the map pack, and then you've got all the organic listings here. You can see in the title and description of all of these companies that they have a keyword or a variation of the keyword, like Plumbing London, Italian Plumber London, Plumber in London, or My Plumber London. So you can see it's always got that keyword or some form of that variation in the title all the time. And that is one of the reasons why they rank at the top of Google. A lot of the time, what we see is websites that don't even have the location or the main keyword in the title. This actually pushes them further down the rankings. They can have a really well optimized website, brilliant content, great internal linking. Everything could be absolutely spot on. But if the title is not done correctly, that page is just not gonna rank on Google. Google wants to see the keyword and the location in the title. So if you've got a website and you've got loads of location pages, you've got to make sure that the location and the main keyword are in the title. It's also good to keep a variation of it in the description as well. So for the purpose of this video, I'll pick a random website like this one and show you how to audit and then fix all the titles in the description. We're going to use a tool called Screaming Frog to analyze this website. So we'll paste the URL over here, go to subdomain and crawl all of the pages on this website. If this is already set on all, you'll want to change it to just HTML because we only want the URLs on the website. We don't need all the rest. We're gonna use this Google Sheet to put all the data from the website we just analyzed. I'll put a link to it in the description of this video. So next, go back to Screaming Frog and download the URLs of this website by clicking on export here. Now we'll open up the downloaded sheet and copy all the URLs and paste it over in our Google Sheet. After that, we'll copy the indexable column and paste it over here as well. Next, you want to grab the titles and meta description and put them in our Google Sheet as well. Lastly, we're gonna copy all the H1s and put them in our sheet. We'll leave out the H2s and H3s for now, but usually we'd probably include these as well. Now let's tidy up the sheet a bit and sort the index column by A to Z. After that, we'll scroll down to all the non-indexable pages and delete them because we don't need them. Now what you can see is all of the URLs that are actually indexable. The next step is to assign page types for all the pages over here. If you're not sure which page it is, just click on the URL and see which page it takes you to. If it takes you to a services page like Boiler Replacement, then it's a main navigation page. If it takes you to a location page like Plumbers Fulham, then it's a local landing page. If it takes you to a blog post, well, it's a blog post. That one's obvious. For example, this is the homepage, so we'll mark it as a homepage. This page, how to keep your boiler healthy in the summer, that's a blog post, so we're gonna mark that one, blog post. This one's a location page, so we're gonna mark it as location page. We'll keep going through all of these pages and assign them the page types. Now sometimes you'll just come across a page like this, which is actually not trying to rank for any specific keyword. So I'd probably mark this one as site information. Again, pages like contact us and locations would be site information. Once we've categorized all the pages, we'll then sort them from A to Z. The reason we did this is because now we know which pages are blog posts, local landing pages, and main navigation pages. Now, accordingly, we can optimize their titles and descriptions because now we know which keywords all of these different pages are targeting. For example, we want to optimize the local landing pages for the different locations they're targeting. Similarly, we want to optimize the main navigation page for plumbers in London because we want them ranking in the London area. Then we've got our site information pages, which don't really need that much optimization. For example, if it's a contact page or an FAQ section, you're not gonna go in and try to optimize that to rank for any keywords. These are good to stay as they are. Now, once everything's sorted, we're gonna put the new title in this column and the new description in here. Beside each title and description, you can see the length of each one of them. Now this is helpful because it shows us the character count for each, allowing us to make sure they're within the optimal length. We want our titles to be 55 characters long and our descriptions to be 155 characters. For example, the title for this blog post here is 75 characters, which is too long. It's gonna get shortened by Google. This means the full title won't show up, which isn't great for SEO. So what we want to do is make sure all the titles are within the 55 character limit. After we've gone through all of them, we can re-index the whole site using Search Console. Don't worry, I'm gonna show you exactly how to do that later in the video. But for now, let's optimize the first title, how to keep your boiler healthy during the summer. As you can see, this title over here has the company's name in the end. Now, a lot of companies put their company name in the title, but it actually takes up valuable space. Now, when we remove the company name, you can see we're within the recommended length. 
This also makes it more relevant to the user search intent. You can even tweak it slightly like adding get plumbing tips to make the title more compelling. If you don't want to do it manually, you can use ChatGPT. For example, let's optimize this title over here. Just use this prompt. Write me a meta title that is no more than 55 characters around this subject. How to look after your boiler in the summer. ChatGPT is then going to give you a better optimized title and you can place it right in. In this case, the title is within 54 characters, which is perfect. Now you can use this prompt to optimize all the titles for your blog posts. Next, let's optimize a couple of titles for the main navigation pages. Now, since this business is based in London, we want all the main navigation pages to target the London area. Looking at the current titles, none of them include London, which is a missed opportunity. Take the boiler service pages, for example. We can change this to boiler and heating services in London. We'll also remove the company name because we're already ranking for that anyway. This version is good, but we want to make it even better and fully optimized. And for that, we're gonna go back to ChatGPT and use the same prompt. Now we've got a slightly better title that's 52 characters long. Boiler and Heating Services, Expert London Engineers. This is good, but I just move London over here in the title so it reads Boiler and Heating Services London, Expert Engineers. Now we've included the keywords Boilers and Heating Services, London, Expert and Engineers. This will help us rank for multiple keywords like boilers and heating, boiler services, heating engineers, and other related variations. Now the next step is to use a tool called Search Atlas. Once we've rewritten all the titles and descriptions, we want to find and track the relevant keywords. And here's how you do it. You head over to Search Atlas and you go to the keyword rank tracker. Then take the homepage URL and paste it into the tool. By default, it will switch to target page, but we don't want that. We're gonna change it to domain because we want to track keywords across the entire website. Make sure to set the location to United Kingdom since this business targets that area. Once that's done, click on Start Tracking. Next, we're going to pull some keywords from the new titles we just created and add them to the tool. This allows us to monitor how these changes impact the website's performance. Now, on this particular website, a lot of titles were written correctly, but that's not always the case. Sometimes we'll find websites where all the titles are missing or they don't include important keywords like the service type or location, and that's seriously going to hurt their rankings. For example, looking at the electrical services page, we can see there's no meta description at all. If we check the code, the description is just completely missing, which is a small but crucial issue that could be easily overlooked. In this case, we'd write a new optimized description of about 155 characters to fill in the gap. After rewriting the titles and descriptions, we'll go back to Search Atlas to start tracking the relevant keywords. You can put all the keywords you want to monitor, like the main services and location-based terms. Once you add them, give it a few minutes to process the data. Now you can see the keyword tracking data, including the current ranking positions, search intent, like commercial or informational, and other useful metrics. This allows us to keep an eye on how the website is performing over time. As we continue to update titles and descriptions, we can measure the impact and see if the site is climbing up the rankings. The goal is to go through every page, make the necessary changes, and then track the progress in Search Atlas. You'll be able to see increases in rankings, more traffic, and overall improvements in SEO performance. All right, let me show you how to re-index it. You're gonna head over to Google Search Console. Once you're in, scroll down to Sitemaps. Here you're going to add your sitemap URL at the end. For example, just type in sitemap or whatever the name of your sitemap is and then hit submit. Once you submit the sitemap, it will let you know if all the pages were successfully indexed. After that, you can head back to Google and check if it's been re-indexed. Just do a site search with one of your URLs. This is how you not only optimize your titles and descriptions, but also ensure they're recognized by search engines. It's a crucial step for seeing those spikes in traffic and making sure all your hard work actually pays off. Thank you for watching until the end. I hope you got a lot out of the video. So our goal here is to help you generate the best quality leads so you can fill out your diary with more customers and grow your business. And that's it for me. By the way, if lead generation is a problem for you right now, then there's a link in the description that can help you solve that problem in under three minutes. I wanna say a big thank you again for watching this video. If you wanna see more like this, please do like and subscribe, and don't forget to drop us a comment in the comment section. We read and respond to every comment we get. Have a great day, I'll see you on the next one.